suppose that we want to take a 500,000 or buy a $500,000 home. We qualify for 6% on a 30 year loan. Let's consider two different cases. In the first case, suppose that we're able to come up with 20% down on the house. And in our second case, we're going to be putting 5% down on the house. 20% of that $500,000 would mean that we'd have to come up with a $100,000 down payment. That's a lot of money and difficult to accumulate, especially if you haven't, if you're a first time home buyer. Uh, it might be easier for you to only come up with 5% down and then borrow the rest. If that's the case, 5% of 500,000 is only $25,000 for a down payment which might be a little bit easier to save up than the $100,000 in this case. So what's the difference from the bank's perspective? Well, first of all, for a $500,000 house, if we put 20% down, we're only taking out a loan for $400,000. With the 5% um, down, we're putting $25,000 down, so we're gonna end up with a larger loan for $475,000 here. At this point, uh, everything on the right-hand side ends up being the same. We're looking at a 6% monthly loan over the course of 30 years. So we're just putting this into the loan formula and looking to calculate the monthly payment. So if we are only taking out a $400,000 loan because we were able to make a bit bigger down payment up front, for this house, we would be paying $2,398.20 for a month. In the case of 5% down, uh, where we are borrowing $475,000, when we evaluate all of this and solve for D, we get $2,847.86 for a monthly payment, but we were able to start out with less money up front. Now, if we're looking at this from the bank's perspective, the bank really likes this customer here the best. Why? Because it's a less risky investment. The person has put a bunch of cash down already, so they have some what we call equity in the home. They own some of the value of the home, so they're not really likely to walk away um, in a bankruptcy or something like that without going through some process to try to get some of that money back through the bank. So you don't get what we call defaulting on a loan, where partway through the person's just like, I'm out, I can't afford this, and they walk away from the loan and, and leave the bank with the house to take care of and get rid of. So with this higher investment, it's less of a risk for the, for the bank. Also, the bank likes the fact that this is a lower monthly payment, and thus it's going to be easier for someone to fit this into their budget than this number here. For a typical 30-year loan, the bank will accept 20% down to, to fund a traditional loan like this. If you can't come up with the full 20%, then the bank will still lend you money, but they're not necessarily as happy about it. And so what they do is they try to cover their own bases. They try to calm down their own risk. And so what they're going to do is they're going to say, I know that you've got this much money down. You can afford this much per month. But what we're going to do is we're going to charge you um, what's called PMI we're going to make you purchase a private mortgage insurance policy. Of course, the bank isn't going to be taking that risk on. They're going to pass that along to you. They're saying, basically, if you can guarantee that you can make this payment, um, we're only going to accept that if you have some backup plan to protect the bank. And that's what this private mortgage insurance is. It's basically, if you walk away from the home, then the insurance company is going to cover the remaining value to the bank so the bank doesn't lose any money on their investment. So how does private mortgage insurance work? Well, in general, private mortgage insurance uh, tends to be, it goes somewhere between like half a percentage and two and a half percentage of the um, value of the loan, or not the value of the loan, but the value, yeah, value of the loan per year. So this is how much you're paying for this insurance policy. 1% of the value of the loan per year. So in this case here where I put 5% down, I took out a loan for $475,000. So my private mortgage insurance 
is going to be equal to 1% of $475,000. And or we can take that as 0 0.01 times the 475,000. And what we come up with is every year you're going to have to pay $4,750 towards this private mortgage insurance so the bank is willing to give you the loan in the first place. Now, we, when we're dealing with talking about housing prices and things like that, we generally talk about budgeting in terms of months, right? We have this monthly payment. So if this is how much we end up having to pay for that private mortgage insurance per year, we can divide that by 12 to get an idea of how much we would be paying each month towards that insurance policy. So if we do 4750 and we divide it by 12... What we come up with here is that I'm going to have to pay an extra $395.83 every month to pay for this insurance policy. Now, just like everything, insurance doesn't give you any return on your value. It's just if something happens, so you end up having to uh, walk away from the home before you've paid the loan off the mortgage company will pay the loan off for you. But because of that, you're paying this $395.83 in addition every month. So what does that mean for you as a consumer? Well, you were paying that $2,847.86 every month. Now we have to pay this additional $395.83 every month. So really what we're talking about is looking at a loan or a, a housing payment, rather. If we add those together, we get $3,243.69 each month that's going towards housing. This money is just paying off what that, um, what that insurance policy is. It's not going towards the purchase of the home at all. It's not decreasing the amount of the loan at all. It's just basically the price of doing business. Um, over here, this is the monthly payment, which is going to be paying off the interest on your loan and then start paying your loan value down. But then you end up basically with this monthly payment here. So just something to be aware of. If you ever end up needing to take out a loan where you're not able to take 20% down, you should expect to have to take out some type of a private mortgage insurance policy, um, which is going to add on to your monthly expenses and how much you need to come up with in order to stay above water on the loan.